All right, here we are. <clears throat> Good morning. It's uh, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. It is Elite Dangerous. And it is game on. Uh, today, uh, we are finally going to arrive at uh, Beagle Point. We got 70 jumps to go. Um, that's not too bad, it's about an hour and a half, maybe. Uh, so we're gonna, um, uh, we're gonna get out of here. Um, uh, this is the planetary nebula where we stopped, um, yesterday. There's a black hole over there. Pretty far away. Well, relatively speaking. Um, we're not going to care too much about that. Because we are going to get on our way. And we are ready to go. Check and see one of this the mail man is trying to do. Alright. <clears throat> Making 
sure the mailman isn't trying to do anything sinister. That's not a normal thing, though. No. No. Like that. All right. Um. So we didn't look at the. Didn't look at the star map. Um. There's very few stars out here, as you can see. It's pretty dark, as opposed to um in here. <laughs> Uh, so this will cause some of this zigzagging which means our distance traveled is going to be much further than the 3000 light years between here and there uh, it also means well we are gonna see some weird angles on our destination stars I do not expect to see any neutron stars out here. Doesn't so mean one might not pop up. Uh, but I think that would be rather unusual. Uh, jump range may also not be. Uh, taken full advantage of because there may not be any stars to jump to that that range and we can see from the little um, blue indicator on the fuel gauge how much fuel we're gonna be spending on the next jump so we can already say that this is gonna be a rather short one so it's only 38 light years um, one we can do up to 54, so that's a relatively short jump. For anyone who's um, um, uh, new or fairly new or have recently taken an interest in Elite Dangerous. Uh, the fuel usage appears to be uh, more exponential than linear. For instance, this uh, 45 light year jump is probably going to take about uh, 4 tons of fuel. I'm going to guess at 4 tons. Once we get there, see how that turns out. All right, so the forty five light year jump. Uh, took uh, five tons of fuel. Uh, a full 54 light year, which is only 10 light years more, takes 8 tons of fuel, so almost, almost double them. Um, so let's see here, 37. Ah, and we're still too hot. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> so let's see, 37 is going to be about 4 tons.
That was only three times. Um, but yeah, the, um, it's not it's not linear. The further you jump, the fuel usage goes up by a considerable amount. Um, so, but we can use the uh, the little blue on the fuel gauge there in the bottom right hand corner to sort of have um, some idea of how far we're gonna jump. Um, Uh, so far, the jump ranges have been rather disappointing. Forty-eight, forty-four, thirty-eight, forty-five, thirty-seven, thirty-nine. Um, when we're jump, when we're um, in a more um, dense. region of space uh, we can utilize the full jump range of the ship which is uh, 54 light years I guess we could expand um, Our um, uh, selection of stars to jump to uh, to include more stars. The problem with that is the stars we would be then including, uh, you can't scoop fuel from. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome back. But I think I am going to try and add... Uh, add some more stars here. Let's have a look. I got 63 jumps to go. What happens if I add L type? I'm going to say that number of jumps went up. That did not have the desired effect. Uh, also, if you're, um, yeah, probably. Also, if you're um, fairly new, um, these uh, seven star types, classes, I hate how to use type here, but class everywhere else. Uh, these seven types are the ones you can scoop fuel from. Uh, these are the ones you cannot. Uh, white dwarf, white dwarfs is uh, uh, they're evil. Stay away. Uh, non sequence stars are black holes and neutron stars. Uh, as all well, um, for long trips, uh, this is the safest uh, configuration. I still got sixty eight. Uh, that is frustrating.
All right. Uh, that sucks. We were down to 63, but now when it recalculates the route, it does uh, the eight. So we kind of gain an extra five jumps. That is uh, very strange. expect uh, most of the systems here to be explored yes but um, we're gonna be exploring a little bit more on the trip home drive really think too much about that trip it's another 65,000 light years I think um, um, yeah, I think we're gonna leave the navigation alone. Um, I don't want to risk getting more jumps added to this trip. Uh, I would love for it to suddenly cover a faster route, but. Um, Choices here, so. we'll them. There's the Milky Way. Gotta be rather small if we can't get it. That range. picked up a couple of stars on a planet here. 
Um, probably not. I uh, I did buy the previous one, um, previous Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, I I didn't play much. Um. I wasn't really that interested in uh, online uh, computers, still not really. There wasn't a lot of offline content in the first Battlefront, Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, so I grew pretty bored with that, so I'm not getting to. Yeah, it seems like a uh, number of or or a lot of people are saying that uh, offline games or, or single player games are, are dead and that uh, uh, online multiplayer is you know where everything is going. I don't necessarily agree to that. I think there is. There's going to be a market for both. It doesn't mean that uh, all games have to offer both online and offline modes, but it, it needs to be. It needs to be clearly marketed what it is. I mean, if I want to do. Online shooter right now. I'll do. I don't know the name. I can do. Um, Battlefield is that what it's called? Battlefield. Battlefield 1 is probably the uh, uh, online, and <clears throat> to some extent offline as well, uh, shooter that I'd pick. And that's not because it's uh, necessarily better than anything else, it's because I have it and it does have online and offline. There's, <clears throat> there's offline campaign mode that you can uh, go through. Go like a story mode. It's not massive, but it's still there. I haven't. Um, I mostly did for the online stuff. Uh, I also have Wolfenstein. Uh, I haven't played it much. It's really hard. I started, but I haven't gotten that far. And I've been been really um, tied up with other games. Um, after this. Um, Uh, 
uh, after this trip to Beagle Point, uh, I, I might um, scale back down Elite Dangerous a little bit. Um, I know I, I went from four hours to three hours, and now I'm doing, you know, about three hours, maybe up to four, if that's how it works out. Um, but I might scale it back a little bit. Um, well, I can try and do some different things. The... For the rest of December here, uh, there probably isn't going to be a lot of um, Eagle Point stuff after today. Um, I don't know if I'm going to stay parked there until January 7th or what. I, I, I haven't made any plans beyond today. Uh, I'll check in with uh, the other commanders on Discord and see what the plans are, and uh, we might uh, make some plans for what we're doing. Uh, I'll still be doing Elite Dangerous, but uh, I might be more on the PS4 side for the rest. And I'll try and record some stuff we're doing, anything on the PC side with different time. Put that up as a video. Drive charging. We'll have to see. But I would like to have some more time to do some more run for reason stuff. Uh, I haven't had a time to do that for. the live stream on uh, um, dangerous a little bit I might have some time for from Gran Turismo live streams and XCOM videos uh, maybe some uh, yeah I just recorded it's, it's a short video just going a little bit of the process um, Unfortunately, the upload of the uh, next episode of XCOM got interrupted because uh, Windows updates. So my computer rebooted. Um, and I didn't notice that until right before I started the stream, so I planned to do the upload. So that's gonna have to wait until after the stream. So the, uh, today's XCOM uh, episode. The editing shows the editing of episode 40, which is already out. No spoilers. Well, unless you already haven't, unless you haven't seen the episode, that is. It's it's out. Um. Frameshift drive charging. How are we doing? Uh, we're doing good. We oh, jump ring. Oh, jump is great. I had some good jump spot. Yeah, 
I mean, it does the editing video doesn't really show much from the actual episode. It, I mean, I'm just. There isn't much you can see. It, it just shows uh, how I'm cutting things, uh, what I'm cutting out, what I'm deleting, how I merge things back together. It is. Uh, uh, putting up a video like that uh, is actually very time-consuming. Um, the episode takes about an hour to record, give or take. I think so many uh, episodes now are going to get shorter because we are making... ...into be... Uh, able to finish off the enemies faster. Uh, and we don't have to deal with the Chosen anymore. Um, the episode might be getting a little bit shorter. It still takes about an hour to record. That is another 10-15 minutes to uh, edit. And it takes... Uh, I haven't actually taken the time to check and see, but it takes... Uh, an hour and a half, maybe two hours to render the video. Um, which is incredibly slow. And then it takes uh, uh, three to four hours, I guess, to upload it. Videos are pretty big between six and nine gigs easily. And that's just a... Uh, um, that's just a... Um, standard 10, uh, 1080 uh, 30 frames per second. My uh, video capture device that I use for the uh, PS4 can't really handle more than 30 frames per second. There is an option to go for 60, but I, I don't I don't know it actually does. Um, with XCOM 2, uh, with the frame rate is about a 4 anyways. There's there's no point in going sixty. I am uh, a little bit surprised that there hasn't been any patches out right now for the chosen to address some of the. Take a look again, see where we are. So we are kind of uh, we're coming down a little bit. That black hole that we just visited, a little bit high up, and being a point is a little bit uh, way down there, so we have to kind of dive down through the galactic plane as well as travel uh, uh, further north, uh, galactic north. We 
getting some extra distance because of that. Are we doing great? Are we taking a uh, thousand light years off already? We're doing good. And there was this uh, PlayStation experience thing last weekend, I guess. Big show and tell that they put out. Didn't really see a lot of interesting stuff there. There's maybe one game that piqued my interest, and I don't even remember what that was. Uh, they seem to spend a lot of time typing. Uh, Typing some games. Totally not interesting to me. can see what, what there was there was <clears throat> there was at least one game Coming out as a game. That sounds like an interesting zombie game if you're kind of into that. Last of Us 2. Look that. Monster Hunter World. Yeah, I'm not doing that. No. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus. Um, it, it's a great game. Uh, it, it really is. But it's like... Um, didn't that come out on PS2? And then it got a remastered for the PS3, and now it got remastered again for the PS4. Uh, I, it's it's a hard game. I never finished it. Uh, it's uh, visually stunning. It was visually stunning even on the PS2. I think it was on. The even if it was the PS3, it was still visually stunning on the PS3. Oh yeah, uh, that's a game called The Forest. to describe that game. It is a survival game, survival horror, I guess. Um, I'm gonna put that on the watch list and rack. The 
There might be other stuff. I didn't catch the whole thing. Uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima could be interesting. I have to look at that. And there's a game called Fe Fair. Fe. Um, that's just some of it, of course. I think the forest was probably the one that uh, stood out the most for me. There's a bunch of other games too that's been hyped for a while. That we're still not seeing. There's some interesting stuff coming up. I'm sure there's interesting stuff on the Xbox too. It's just uh, I don't have one. I have any plans of getting one, so I don't really follow what's there. Alright, so we've been slacking a little bit on the jumping here. I have to pick it up a little bit. Been kind of a little sidetrack talking about other games uh, and uh, looking at the list of games I've been talked about at the PlayStation. to get our mind back in the game here it's all right I'm not in a hurry I still got 30 days not 30 days I got uh, like 25 days to get there I'm not in a hurry uh, but I would like to get there today and I'm gonna, gonna make it. Uh, this is jump number 30 Gonna see how far we've gone. And before we are left. Uh, we are getting uh, closer to the red one. 
there's got to be another sun here, so... Two fingers, I've already been here. I would have cared about those two. about them either. So we got 45 jumps to go and the 30 at 75. Uh, so we did gain, uh, strangely, uh, an extra 5 jumps. Really weird. Thirty. Okay, that's two jumps less. Oh, well, I think we're gonna do that. I just shave two jumps off by including L type stars. So I'm gonna do that. Then we're gonna keep going. I think for the L time stars, it's probably not going to be a lot of. Uh, a lot of discoveries of those. Um, we'll see if we find one. I think uh, uh, most of the stars here are going to be discovered um, simply because there are very few stars to jump to. And um, I don't know how many people have been out there to Beagle Point, but uh, they pretty much all have to go through the same <clears throat> the same 40, 50 stars out here to get out there, so...
I'm gonna have to pop in and uh, get the fuel star thing. Doesn't really look like I'm gonna hit something new and different. As long as those L type stars doesn't all end up in a string, you should be alright. We're gonna have to uh, look at that once we jump into an L type star. Check it. We got come. Next few stars, just so we can make sure we're not gonna end up without fuel out here. I think uh, a number of the people that did go out here on this expedition uh, did bring uh, a fuel limpet uh, controller. <clears throat> so pretty much everybody should be able to rescue everybody else. Uh, but it's still like a... And, and a bit of an undertaking. Uh, traveling. Uh, what do we got left? 1600, 1600 light years to uh, rescue somebody. Number 37, and we've got 37 left to go, 36. We're kind of halfway now in the first hour. I'll probably uh, get a few, get some more, a higher jump frequency going forward. Uh, but we do have to keep an eye out on what we jump into now since we are including non scoopable stars. have passed through the uh, galactic plane 
now traveling down towards uh, where Beagle Point is at. to get a full scoop out of them without stopping. Um, but we have found some jump range finally. Um, we've been jumping 50, 1, 2, 5. Last 6 jumps have been at 50 or very close to it. And uh, I guess we broke that. Um, I kind of wish there was some way of uh, uh, going from way, uh, waypoint to waypoint in the galaxy map. Uh, rather than manually moving there and dealing with uh, up and down and star selection and whatnot. I don't think there is. So there's a brown star. All right, so what I want to know now is... What is this? That's a red dwarf, so we don't have to worry about that because I will be scooping going into the brown star. Um, well, on the star before it and the star after. So I can deal with the jump um, with that brown dwarf. It's just when they come, if they come like two in more than two in a row, then I get. Um, well, I kind of would think that uh, uh, the rounding tool here take that into consideration. It seems to be doing it when the Neutron stars, where it never takes you to more than two neutron stars in a row. Because I don't have the fuel to do it. So you would think it would do the same uh, for normal stars as well. But I think it was a red dwarf before the brown dwarf. We'll check the galaxy map again when we get to the 
red to the next red war. But it doesn't really matter. Um, the K class stars are you? Uh, this is going to take us uh, past two thousand light years for the for the day. Way past. Um, we have thirteen hundred and fifty light years left. Oh, it's it's like, very close. You can almost see it. Can't see anything because it's so. There are so few stars to look at out here. And there's so much light pollution from that last K star right behind us. Got a fuel, full tank of fuel and going to a class L brown dwarf. No refueling on that one. This is going to be the first brown dwarf we've actually seen on the trip, I think. Uh, where the dwarf is the main star, uh, we've seen plenty as uh, a part of a binary or other. We'll have a look. Not discovered. Only gas giants. Gonna bookmark it and come back here on the I'll consider it. I'm gonna delete most of the bookmarks up here anyway. Get past them. That's another thing I'd like. Uh, more bookmarks. Yeah, there's nothing here for uh, navigating waypoints or a route galaxy. They totally should have them. Friendship drive charging. Now I'm gonna have to do a good fuel job at this port.
Alright, we didn't do 100%, but oh, close enough. Alright, how we doing? We've got 27 jumps to go. Getting some good miles on here. Some of these last jumps have been uh, really good. Oh, they're not, of course, in a direct uh, evil point. But it is the best you can do. Alright, so we're moving on to one of the last sectors, not here. here mostly useless rocks
Okay, we got uh, 1,010 light years left to go. I believe this is going to break the 1,000 light year barrier for us. Here's to go. That's a red dwarf. That's a red dwarf. That's a getting a uh, little bit of everything here None of these are actually brown dwarfs. saying that I probably cursed us now That's a white star, and the next one is Beagle Point, which is a K. Alright, I got 22 jumps left on that. If I take the L types out. Or will it recalculate? Now it says 23. Really weird. Why would it change? If the route was already optimized, I don't know why. The route was already optimized and wasn't using any L class stars. Why did it recalculate and why did it get? more jumps why did 
to get more jumps out. That's another feature that I like to have. Being able to save uh, a route. And I know that sounds weird because why would you want to you know, make sure that you're going through the same systems over and over and over. Like, well... Maybe I do. Um... If you're doing trade... For instance, for a, um, a community goal, uh, if your uh, if you're crazy and don't have a fuel scoop on your cargo ship, uh, you may want to route, may want to uh, create a route going from. Uh, wherever you're buying your stuff uh, to wherever it is you are going to uh, via a specific system uh, in order to dock there and refuel uh, well it doesn't uh, the discovery scanner has an active and passive mode. Um, so yeah, and, um, You can't turn it off, huh? Well, I'm not sure why that's necessarily a problem, but... Oh, I won't. Oh, well, I don't know. I can't turn it off... Uh, at all. And it doesn't ping unless you hold the button. Uh, but if you power it off, I don't know if it pings then. I can't power it off. I can't deactivate it. Oh, I, I don't know. But uh, the scanner won't, won't honk unless you tell it to. I don't know if there's... Yes, but that's the passive detection. There's no active ping in that. So, uh, depending on uh, which of the discovery scanners you have, the passive detection range um, varies. Um, I think with the uh, I don't I don't remember the the ranges, but the advanced one has the longest passive detection range. As well as an infinite active detection. Uh, 
Uh, but back to my navigation thing. Uh, I think we should be able to create multi-legged uh, trips. Uh, or, or creating a trip using multiple waypoints. Whichever way you want to put it. And save those as routes. So you can create a route going from wherever you are to wherever it is you want to go uh, via some other system where you like where you will refuel because you don't have a fuel and that way you can just keep reloading that every time you're flying uh, between those systems for your trading <laughs> uh yeah I, I don't think there's any way to turn the scanner off. Um, I guess if it gets damaged, you can repair it. I don't know if it goes... Uh, um, if you have to reboot it or, or uh, just magically comes back once you repair it. I'm not gonna crash uh, to test that hypothesis. So we're down to like the last few jumps here. So if I don't honk here, it says discovered one new astronomical object. And that's all I'm gonna get. Because there's nothing else in range. And then if I honk, I'll find me 11 more. Passive range isn't that great. That's uh, 300 light seconds away, and I didn't discover it passively. So, passive range isn't really huge. Even with the advance. Yeah. Red dwarfs. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're looking here, you, you'll see all the. Uh... And again, here you see, uh, you see the lack of stars or star system. It, uh, this page usually shows all the stars within 20 light years or uh, a ma there's a max number of objects it will show uh, and there's no star systems within 20 light years of this this one is showing because that's my selected destination and there is room for it well actually the selected will always
gone through the coffee, gone through the water, uh, time to go through the energy drink. So here we can see there are there's a few systems within 20 and then there's my destiny so yeah we're really down to uh, <sighs> very few star systems around here think so I don't think that list cares what your um... collection is so uh, the list will show all the star systems regardless of your selection I'm pretty sure so it's easy to spot there's only three Plus my destination. We can go in here and have a look. Oh, so now if I select everything, you might see a few more stars. Yeah, but now I'm 53 light years beyond that, and now I found three more, so that's... But well, I still only showing those three. Even if there's more options. I don't know if there's uh, more stars. Uh, Twelve jumps to Beagle Point. I'm gonna take these guys out again. Oh, so yes, you can't use these as um, a guarantee uh, that, um, like if you set it to filter out uh, fuel stars, you can't use that as a guide uh, because those stars could be anything. They could be um, black holes, they can be uh, carbon stars or, or white dwarfs, who knows. Uh, brown warts, whatever. Doesn't it doesn't care about your. It just shows the nearest um, star systems. Alright, so we have uh, 454 light years to go. Getting very, very close. Uh, I wanna... wanna get a full tank here.
Alright, so we passed uh, 3,000 light years for today's trip. We got 406 light years to go. Got uh, 10 jumps to get there. gonna be um uh, quite a relief actually getting here Just uh, don't really know what I'm gonna do after. I know I talked about going, ar you know, around the thing, or, you know, around the galaxy, or whatever. Like uh, make a left turn up here and then kind of go all, uh, along the edge. Um, that's a long trip. I, I don't know if I can. And, um... I'm gonna set the wrecked route for uh, the bubble after. Um. Or if I'm gonna swing a little bit outside. Uh, good morning, Tritium 8. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we're like seven jumps away from Beagle Point now. Be there in a minute. About like 220 light years to go. I've used an ass for all my exploring except for this trip. Uh, I... I don't really know... I 
I think uh, it's because you can get well, you can get the bigger frame shift drive, so you can get a uh, really good range even if you are carrying uh, a lot of stuff. I don't think you have that same option uh, with a big fuel scoop and an SRV. You don't get that range on the uh, on the ASP, and that would make a trip like this. Little bit. But longer, I guess. Well, I mean, the distance is just the number of dumps be a lot higher. So. I guess uh, with the. Uh, With a 6A frame shift drive, um, I think the Anaconda is the one that gets the best jump range. And uh, I mean, I'm even carrying two SRVs in here, so we are bringing some extra weight. And I'm still doing. Uh, jump ranges just short of 54 light years. So, yeah, the Anaconda is a... It's more than just a battleship. It has, um... A lot of good uses. Well, if you're fully loaded and you're jumping forty eight, uh, then you've got a really good uh, frame shift drive. I didn't have a lot of uh, rolls to get what I got. Uh, I still got a pretty good. Uh, still got a pretty good roll. I'm happy with it. And I haven't. It isn't. I mean, I have no armaments on this. Carry no weapons. My hull is just the standard, the standard stuff. A shield generator is, um, uh, I don't know. My shield generator is just enough to keep this base rock from scratching my hull. carry a minimum amount of limpets. I have three limpets, I think. But they can be synthesized now, so I don't worry about not having limpets. If I need limpets, I can create more. Turtles? There's no turtles in space. Yeah, I got two more jumps. Two more jumps, man. 
No beagle point. Um, am I sure? Well, um, I think in Stephen King's It, uh, It was a monster from space, and I think it was. represented as a turtle a big one uh, in the final battle for turtle light and it came from space so uh, I guess according to Stephen King's there may be uh, turtle monsters in space. I'm not sure how they did that in the new movie. I haven't seen it. Uh, I don't remember what they did in the TV series from that one. Uh, did I not pay attention? Oh, we're actually in Bingo Point. I wasn't paying attention. We got to Beagle Point and I was totally just talking about Stephen King. We're here. We made it. Um, yeah, um, I, I, I read the book and it was really weird. Uh, Stephen King books are, are often really weird. The end battle in the book uh, just struck me as really weird. In the TV series, I was kind of disappointed because my recollection is that they didn't do very well. Uh, with that whole thing. Uh, simply because, I don't know, uh, putting Stephen King's... Strange Mind on the screen is, is, uh, challenging. What's the name of the game? Uh, this is Elite Dangerous. And yes, this is about as far away from Earth as you can get. Um, I am 65,279.4 light years from Earth. Or 0.35 if you want to uh, have a little bit more accuracy. Um, and I'm going to get some distance uh, from the star. Let's go out here. Uh, what kind of games do I like? Um, I enjoy a wide variety of games. Uh, lots of simulators, I guess. 
I like racing games. Uh, I clearly enjoy this space sim. And, um, I do, what else, what else am I playing? Um, adventure games, role-playing games, um, two of my, uh, other favorites, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and The Last of Us, uh, those are some of my favorites, I guess, uh, probably not. That did not strike me as something that I would want to play. The um, Battle Royale version, maybe. Uh, not really something that I thought about. So we got some distance to uh, uh, to the main star. And the purpose of that was not really to scan these planets, uh, but to reduce the uh, light pollution. Uh, change camera. Full stop. Engines full stop. Mm. That's the Milky Way. This is the Milky Way galaxy seen from Beagle Point. Hold on. Full stop. Engines full stop. Take a picture. Picture taken. Um, yeah, um, I'm kind of disappointed that uh, Horizon Zero Dawn didn't get Game of the Year. Um, at the Reason Award show, whoever does that. Um, it was kind of expected that the um, uh, Zelda, um, Zelda fans would uh, um, make sure that Zelda won. Um, I haven't played Zelda, the, um, whatever, um, not my, not my thing, change camera. All right, uh, we made it. This is as much of the galaxy as I can get on the map, on the screen. Beagle Point. Earth is down here somewhere. 65,000 light years away. Sagittarius A is uh, way down here. I got a couple of friends uh, out exploring. I think this guy is on the way up here too. It has been a long trip. Uh, we died once on the way, and we had to restart. 
So we have uh, technically traveled uh, 90,000. Over 90,000 light years to get here. There are no stars. There's no star systems within 20 light years of this place. Uh, there are still some stars we can make it to that is further out We can make it there. And we can make it. Uh, there's not these very thin lines you can see where you can actually. Um, where you can get to. Uh, so uh, this isn't the further star. Uh, from Earth, it is just, um, it's more of a historical location at this point. Uh, where it is the, um, uh, it's the furthest you could get to before engineers. Uh, after they got the engineers and uh, extended jump range, uh, you can go further. Uh, but jump range used to be capped at 45 light years. Uh, before. And uh, you just... Uh, could not get further yeah so um, today it's not the furthest system there's there's more um, and I guess the star uh, that is the furthest away uh, is a one-way ticket and you can get there but you can't get back you have to use a neutron star for the last jump to get out to the star that's uh, sitting the furthest away uh, and then uh, you can't get back. So we're not doing that. Absolutely not doing that. These guys are looking kind of icy. Uh, well, since we're here, we're just gonna scan all these guys. Hang on one second. <coughs> um. So yeah, uh, we're here. Um, I don't know what to do now. Um. I don't really have any need to land on any of those uh, places. Uh, as far as I can tell... There really isn't... a lot of useful stuff for me to... pick up here at all. I guess we could see if there's any chromium around here, but um, I think first we'll just uh, 
We'll just scan this entire system. Kind of be done with it. Yeah, I am planning on uh, scanning more on the way home. We'll probably do more like... Uh, We have to, we have to do some you know marathon jumping um, because it's it, it's a long way home uh, but we also have to do some discovery I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do. Still have to think a little bit about that. Um, I may still make that the left turn that I talked about. Um, uh, hold on. Uh, change camera. Full stop. Engines full stop. Take a picture. Picture taken. All right, so, um, Right, uh, change camera. Change camera. Uh, so that was the Beagle Point uh, star uh, with the Milky Way in the background. You gonna hook up? You gonna do uh, the Oculus Rift with uh, Elite Dangerous? Yeah. Um, uh, it looks really cool with uh, Elite Dangerous in uh, virtual reality. Um, I haven't tried it. Just uh, be careful. Uh, my understanding is that it does take some time getting used to uh, the whole virtual reality thing. Uh, you get um, a bit dizzy or uh, disoriented at first. So. I guess uh, shorter periods of gaming in VR to start with, get used to the experience. We're just gonna get all of the guys board.
So it took a little bit longer to get here than I expected. Uh, we traveled uh, 3,528 light years on today. 73 jumps. Um, somehow we gained 3 jumps. This one is supposed to be 70. But because we changed our routing a little bit, we gained. Uh, we gained 3 jumps total. Took an hour and 50 minutes to get here. Those 73 jumps, uh, which is a little slower than normal. Um, but we took a kind of chill and talked about other video games and stuff. Yeah, I'm like totally unprepared because I don't really have anything else. Not to do right now. We could land on one of these suckers. Uh, the third planet is a good candidate. So the one thing that I need is uh, chromium. Second planet has 10%. This one is just a little bit lower. I guess if you want chromium, we should go here. But I want to go see that uh, blue, um, blue star out here. Let's see what that is. Just because it's even further away. It's easy enough, there's only two jumps back to the point. It's a class A star out here. Yeah. I'm just gonna go out for uh, uh, a look at this. Uh, a look at this star, and then we'll go back to Beagle Point and. Uh, Take a break. Here we go. One big giant star. And not much else. Uh, Arimus really wanted to get everything out here, huh?
Yeah, we barely need the fuel. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't looked at the other uh, expedition. I don't really. I haven't paid attention to uh, legendary elite pilots or anything. But here we go. We're gonna make a second entry into Beagle Point. Fuel, and then I'm gonna take a break from Elite Dangerous on the PC for a while. Um, I need to scan here because we already did. Here we are, 65,280 light years from Earth. Um, so let's see. What I kind of think I may want to do, I was kind of thinking of doing some of these on my way back, uh, but I may not. Uh, I may try to find Stars out here somewhere. All right, hold on. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. What did I just see? That probably wasn't that exciting. Um, okay, I'm going to bookmark that. Uh, that's where we're going to go. Uh, I'm going to check out Hold on one second. And so that and this. So well, here's the expedition. Uh, distant friends, here we go. Come on, EDSM, don't. Is EDSM not doing?
All right. All right, it looks like the expeditions are broken on EDSM right now. That's not why we went here. Uh, we were going to look at... Um, uh, this star, Blea. E R W E one dash two system not found. Hold on. Okay. Nobody's been there before. The system doesn't know about it. That's where we're going to go. Assuming we can get there, let's plot a route. It's uh, about 20,000 light years. We're not going to start now, of course. Uh, we're going to hang out here uh, at Beagle Point for about three weeks, I guess. Uh, we have to see what happens. I'm not sure if we're going to hang out here until January. or uh rod plotting failed Rod plotting failed. Yeah. Just looking into options here. That's all. Um, so I'll check with the other guys on the expedition to see what they want to do. Um. We may have a little get together out here and I don't know, run our SRVs around or whatnot. Uh, rod plotting failed. Why is rod failing? We really should be able to get there. He's having trouble figuring out how to get out of here. That's where we came from. Alright, so we may have to do a couple of, uh, uh, we may have to get into this, uh, we may have to get into the arm, kind of, sort of, first. So we're going to jump in here, and we're going to jump over here, and then we're going to jump out here, and then from there on, we're going to, um, From out here, we're going to take a path into um, Colonia, which is in here somewhere. Colonia. It's over here somewhere. Uh, so that will we'll, we'll take a different route in, uh, hoping we can get across this 
section right here. There's stars. We can do it. I think that's going to be the plan. I'm going to do a couple of uh, jumps in. Like here, in here, over here, and then down this way. Uh, Colonia is this one here with the yellow. And then from Colonia, we'll go back to the bubble and we'll sell all our stuff. Uh, that is our plan. Uh, not sure when we're going to start uh, heading that way. But it won't be today. Uh, we had a great trip getting out here. We've done a lot of discoveries. Uh, we got a lot. Um, the main thing, I guess, that we discovered was all those neutron stars. I probably have a hundred new neutron stars. It's got to be at least a hundred uh, new discovery uh, neutron stars. Uh, I can check that. But um, I think that's going to be all for today, guys. I, I don't really have anything else I want to do here at Beagle Point right now, all by myself. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up and just say, uh, yeah, it's uh, game over. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being part of the trip out here. And hopefully you all uh, have someone you accompany me on the trip back. But that will be for later. Right now, it's uh, game over.